What's up, man? What's up? Uh, is your name Matt? Is that your name? No, that's my dad's name. <laughs> oh, I'm like, who's Matt? <laughs> Matt Swift. <laughs> started yeah. yeah bro whatever yeah. you are all right so first of all just how long have you guys been doing music and what inspired you guys to start it mm. david yeah. you want to take this yeah um i would say we started doing music in 2018 late 2018 uh me and isaiah were just we we're just buddies uh we knew each other from mutual friends we uh by playing basketball together and uh we both like music though like we both liked hip-hop and we would always talk about hip-hop and new artists and different artists and um mm. we would just have fun like you know we would we would put on youtube beats in the car and we would just want we would just freestyle over them and uh that's kind of i think that's where the love grew first is just us uh you know spitting bars over some rap beats and you know we we, <laughs> we i think we figured out like oh we might, we might have a talent for this we just enjoy doing it you know and then we started recording it for fun, you know, only only to ourselves, not to anyone, not not to the world. <laughs> um, but then uh, eventually, I think that's where the snowball started, where, you know, we had we had friends of ours who, who actually thought we were you know decent at it. And they were like, keep doing it, you know, and uh, mm. that's kind of where it grew. And then we started recording ourselves and then eventually just kept snowballed into, you know, we produce our own things. And then, yeah, from 2018 to now that's it's just been a, a growth of us in our in in the bedroom just <laughs> just creating music writing and making pieces you know yeah that's mm. cool what's your big goal for it and then like what are you trying to get to with this um i think like so like david said we we originally started out because you know it's fun we like music listening to it and um we liked somewhat creating and writing and recording to it. Um, but as, as we've grown in the music, um, I think our missions kind of also grown and, and it's become uh, more defined and that is ultimately to like serve people through it. Um, I can't tell you how many times, like just people in my own life have, have told me how much like a song impacted them and, you know, even they're spiritually or emotionally. And um, it's pretty heavy to hear that, uh, but it's really cool. And that only makes uh, what we do um, even more like mission oriented. It's like, we want to continue the mission of like being vulnerable and being ourselves and, 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 and speaking, speaking our testimony and ultimately like glorifying God and serving his people through it. So that's the goal. That's the mission. Um, but if you mean in terms of like long-term results and stuff like that, I think I could speak for both of us and say that this is like what we're passionate about. And if it's the Lord's will, we would love to get to a place where we can um, do this full time uh, some, some, sometime down the road. Uh, but for now, like we're just enjoying the process of, of making stuff and putting it out and um, serving people through, through what we can do right now. That's awesome. Um, so right now, how, how long do you guys spend each week, like trying to make music or, mm. yeah, <laughs> I think it's pretty sporadic. Um, <laughs> it's very sporadic because it really depends on, uh, how much free time we both have, how much free time I have. Usually, uh, we'll try to do it at least once a week. Uh, we'll try to meet up like on a Saturday and, and get stuff done. Um, but also like during my spring breaks or during my, my summer breaks is the time where, you know, we will really get into it. Like, like if we're, if we have a vision for something, we'll, we'll knock, we'll get a lot of, like, we'll get a lot done in like a certain period of time, like maybe over a few weeks, like meet up three times a week or something and get something done. But as of right now, because we're both working, and I'm in school and this is my last semester. Thank the Lord. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Like it's right now it's like a once a week thing. Yeah. Yep. Once a week. And yeah, man, we we're hopeful after David's done with school, hopefully we'll, we'll get into 
you know, that multiple times a week. And once that happens, uh, you know, be on the lookout because we'll, we'll get more stuff done and it's going to yeah. be, yeah, there's going to be a lot more new music. Oh, um, I, I did want to ask, I did want to add this, what that I kind of missed it. Sorry. In the first answer, but, uh, uh, so the name sharp dialect, uh, it, it basically means like, it's, it's like a double entendre sharp meaning witty dialect being when the way the style in which you speak so it's like witty speech but it's also like um sharp like the word of god like a double-edged sword dialect like speaking truth and like a truth that penetrates the heart and i think for us uh, the i think for us the um the message that the lyrics has always been the priority in 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 our music and and honestly i mean i i speak for myself when i think when i say like um, just in, in, in Christian music in general, like specifically Christian hip hop, like I've always felt like there was kind of a void of like um, just, you know, not a void, but like, yeah, kind of a void. I felt like uh, there, there was a drop off in like um, lyricism that was like unto the Lord or, or like just, you know, speaking truth unto him and, and but also like having it be like really dope, you know, and uh and that's kind of like where I, I think that's kind of why i wanted to start making music like creating my own art like speaking you know talking to the lord with my own with my own words in a sense and then stuff that would resonate with me because i felt like there was there wasn't music that was really resonating with me <laughs> at the time so i started creating we started creating our own stuff you know that's good yeah uh, yeah i think i could agree with that um for me, yeah, there wasn't music that I resonate, resonated with a lot in the, the Christian music space. Um, I was resonating, resonating with music, you know, from secular artists like John Bellion or, or Healy or just guys that, that, are, that do a great job of being transparent and translating like their thoughts and feelings uh, to lyrics that are memorable and simple to memorize. So I was really inspired by that. And I just wanted to like bring that mentality and sort of songwriting to this space. Um, and so, yeah, it's really unique how, how both of us, me and David kind of come from different musical backgrounds, kind of different influences and it all meshes together to create like a new thing. And so, um, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. That's cool to have like actual meaning behind what you're doing, you know, not just like making music to do it, just to, like, you have something that you're like trying to like sp like you're trying to spread the gospel at the same time as making like cool songs and stuff like that and that's just super cool thanks bro yeah thanks man yeah um so how are you guys able to get like ruslan <laughs> i don't want to like you guys like were on <laughs> one of your son's songs and you got him on one of your songs so, like how did that happen exactly yeah so <laughs> Yeah, this is crazy. It's it, it's it's pretty mind boggling to us too. Like, um, so Ruslan has these things called Fan Love Fridays. I don't know if you've heard of them. Well, actually, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack before even getting into the Fan Love Fridays. So, uh, uh, for Indy Jones three, uh, his last album, Ruslan had a post on his Instagram, basically saying that they're gonna do a King's Dream contest. And in the King's Dream contest, he said that the there's you know it's a remix contest, and whoever does the best remix of one of his songs from his last album, uh, you know they they if they won they they get a they'd be a featured onto his next album, and it was a fifty dollar entry, and uh, I remember <laughs> I remember telling you telling Isaiah like, bro like we should just do it like there's nothing to lose here like let's just do it let's have fun with it. <laughs> And I remember Isaiah being like, nah, man, let's just, let's just create music. Let's just, <laughs> let's, just like, let's just do our thing here. I was like, bro, there's nothing to lose. It's just 50 bucks. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, like we, uh, I ended up taking one of his beats, flipping it. And then we ended up creating the song called Soundcheck to it. And, uh, and our, and our buddy, Jake Driscoll, who's an awesome graphic designer and photographer, he, uh, he, uh, he he videotaped it for us like he made the visual for us and uh that's kind of how we ended up meeting or 
yeah, that was our first interaction with Ruslan. He saw our video. He really liked it. And we ended up winning top three uh, of the contest. <laughs> the funny thing is that he actually ended up putting, there was only supposed to be one winner that was going to go on his album, but because he liked those three entries so much in which one of ours was included uh he ended up putting three artists on his album uh so that which is the song pocket watching we're on the song pocket watching by ruslan and then um so yeah that was how we were able to meet him because uh obviously we had to interact with him <laughs> so, just, yeah. oh, we won. so uh, and then uh but now going on to that, he, he has a he has a really awesome Patreon community where uh, mm -hmm. every every Friday um, he uh, he he critiques people's music, constructive criticism. He'll critique uh, art like music artists' music on every Friday. He still does it today till today, and um, and we would you know we would throw our songs on there all the time, and and it was cool. It was cool to see his reaction. He would give us really good advice, and he really likes our stuff. And then, uh, yeah, we played him Let You Down for one of the Fan Love Fridays. And then he was just really digging it. He was just like, he just like in, in the, the during the live session or during like the, the YouTube live, he was just like, let me hop on this. <laughs> and we were like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hop on this, bro. <laughs> so, so we DM'd him and then um, sent him over the song. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what was your guys' favorite song to make? <laughs> Mm. oh man that's so hard um i'm uh i guess uh i i, I kind of have an answer for this it's, um, it goes back to the last the ep we just dropped praying for you i think that is my favorite process to a song simply because it took so long like that song there's another version of that song that's totally different in terms of the instrumentation like it's just uh it's like this kanye west type choir sample to it and that's what's driving the song and and when it was that version it was good but it wasn't like it was my least favorite song on the ep originally i'm like yeah i don't know if i feel this yet and um one day we were just playing the track through and i was like david shut off the sample just leave it the drums and our vocals and then i i asked him if he could play like come up with a guitar chord for it and by the end of the day, this guy came up with like three or four different guitar chords for it and like bass lines. And so the song just transformed from being sample driven to like David's guitar, uh, live guitar. And it sounded so much better to me. And um, and so like, yeah, that was like the third or fourth version of the song. And it came out to what it what it is today. And um, I'm glad we kind of went through those versions and, and found the best one possible. What was cool about the praying for you track was that um, I was trying to find like an intro to the song for praying for you, like the the the, the first version, oh, yeah. not the one that you heard. Yeah. And uh, I ended up so the the intro to the song we ended up just making the entire song like the intro, and and then we just scrapped the the the, the sample. the The sample the the original track had yeah, like Isaiah said, it had more of a Kanye West. Like it was like a chop sample. It was more hip hop. It was like more boom bap. It, I still like it. I think it's good. But I definitely think what we ended up doing to it was more our style. Like in, in yeah, a fit, yeah, in a fit better. It was more true and, to uh, us. Yeah, yeah. But as as far as for me, I guess uh, it's very hard for me to choose uh, a favorite song because you know they're all like my uh like they're all like my children you know <laughs> like which one do you love more <laughs> like you work pretty hard on all of them but oh man i would say probably till the end is up there for me um massively underrated song yeah till the, till the end just because i just really like those guitar chords like and then um i like I like the verse that I put on there. It's one of my favorite verses. And then, yeah, I don't know. I like all of them. <laughs> I just like, I like yeah, I think, I, uh, but just to give you like a little, little foreshadowing, my favorite song that will, we've made, what's still being made at, like, 
uh, and it's not out yet. It'll come out this year, hopefully. Um, but it's called Breakdown. Um, and I'm sure David will probably mention another song that's going to be his favorite. That's also going to come out this year. Um, but I don't know if you want to name the title of that song yet, David. Which song? Which I do. I, 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 I can't tell you, bro. You, you, know, <laughs> you know, the one, the dance track, the dance track, the pop. Oh, song. yeah. Yeah. I like that one a lot. I yeah. That one's kind of good. That's gonna be really good. But but truth be told, I don't I don't think I've created the my favorite track, like like the like you know, that one track, that proud, like perfect track that and I don't know if it's ever attainable or achievable, but I feel like I've ne- I haven't made that yet. I don't know. That may if I, I don't think, think that may- I think I don't know. I think that's a great I think that's a great uh way of creating you know, always in search for the perfect track, because if uh, the more you make, the closer you get to it. And what you make is still good. Uh, it's, it's a progress. So, and it's a process. So it's like, it's like the, it's like creating something that's better than the last thing. That's like the best way to go about music, I think. And uh, I think we, I think we're doing that. How long does it take for you guys to make like one song? Like what's the longest and what's the shortest? Oh, that's Ooh. the shortest is um two days i think with without you yeah, yeah. Th- that was well, dude, tr- that was truth be told song, bro though. it just depends it really depends yeah. because if we had an entire week we could finish like an entire week to work on music we could finish probably two or two songs two or three songs uh without you happen so quick because we had two full days to work on something and so that was an idea that was created and finished within the first two days because we had those two days to That's work cool. on music. But man, yeah, it's like every song takes forever, technically, when you're talking about the, the, the amount of time that lapses. Um, like the music we're currently working on uh, that we're trying to release this year, some of the songs, song ideas were, were birthed two years ago. Um, and so it's just that moment in time where the idea, the seed is planted, but now it's just about like executing it and finishing it. And so a lot of these songs that we're working on now are, are just ideas from past year, a couple of years. Um, and then it's mixed with new, brand new ideas. And so it just, just, yeah. it just, it just depends on how much time we, we have and put into it. But I feel like, I feel like if we have days, hey, we can probably, our process is probably a lot quicker than it used to be. I mean, it's also about like when inspiration hits, like you, you, you never know when inspiration is going to hit, come and go. Like, like some songs are meant to be created slower, mm. uh, I, I believe. Yeah. Because uh, whether it's like, you know, you have you have an idea for a song, but it's not fleshed out completely yet. But, but then the moment you get that, you get that idea for it that finishes the song. Um, mm. I think, you know, sometimes time has to pass for you to finally get that idea or for it to click. Um, and then other songs just come together more. Yeah. They just come better together really quickly. It's just, you never really know, honestly. Uh, that's that's mm-hmm. the cool thing about music. It's like, it just ebbs and flows and some things are quicker than others. And uh, yeah. I don't know, yeah, that's a, but, that's a, yeah, that's a great point, David, because like the EP, for example, that was just like lightning in a bottle. All those songs yeah. came, came the ideas of them kind of came within a matter of a couple of weeks. Whereas the songs that we're working on now from a couple of years ago, like David said, sometimes just more life has to be lived um, for you to come up with the right verse or the right uh, yeah. message to the to old ideas, you know? So that's yeah, good. Or so, sometimes you have like an idea for something for a song and you and you just don't know how to execute it yet and sometimes you just have to keep getting better <laughs> you have to keep mm. growing and in, 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 in either production or sonically you have to you have to get better in order to achieve that thing that you want to achieve with that song you know so it's just it's a yeah it's just inspiration it's just some t- some songs take longer than others i think praying for you is probably the longest song we took we took as far as just hours on it because definitely yeah because it was one song and then it completely changed into another song yeah yeah and another and another and there's like four versions bro <laughs> yeah 
I, I actually I'm curious to hear the, the original. David, do you still have the original? Yeah, I think so. I think they're locked up in there somewhere. You should yeah. post it on SoundCloud. I actually want to hear it again to see where, where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> I listened to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're not doing anything on uh, yeah. April 16th, we're going to be performing a, again. Yeah. It's either Most 16th or 17th. Be, I think it's April 16th. But it's a Friday, I bro? I think so. That's weird. They always do it on Saturdays. Yeah, but yeah, either April sixteenth or seventeenth, we'll post it on our social media. We're gonna be performing again with a uh, through a Beach Chapel. They're like a um, I don't even know how to explain them. They're like a they're um, a band slash ministry, and they throw on um worship nights at Beach yes. Piers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. so I think they'll that's be really in cool. San Clemente. Oh yeah, but... well, what is your vision behind this? Like, yeah, I want to know like more about you. Like what? Yeah, so. Um, like I told Isaiah, I just started like, it was a school assignment for my first interview, but then I, I realized I liked it. So then I did it mm-hmm. with like the shirts that I'm making, the ones I sent you. Mm-hmm. Those are for like part of the profits going to this like nonprofit organization that's helps the homeless and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I did an interview with the founder of that guy. Cause we know him from our church too. He does like a bunch of super cool art and stuff. So he's pretty mm-hmm. cool. But um, with a, I just want to be able to like uh, her whole church thing is like make the father known or whatever. So it's mm-hmm. like just to be able to spread the gospel everywhere is like the big goal for me. It's like I want to be able to and in- be able to influence a lot of people, mm-hmm. like in a good way though. Like there's a lot of influencers that like they're not influence the right stuff, <laughs> but um, yeah, like. If I could um, just, like, be able to touch lots of people with, like, one small action, that's what I want to do. So, an interview is a great way to do it because then I'm, like, also, especially when I saw other Christians, then I'm showing other Christians, like, what you can do. Like, there's no yeah. such thing as, like, a boring, boring Christian or whatever. Like, you can do super right. fun stuff as a Christian. So Absolutely. That's awesome, bro. I love that. Yeah, yeah I'm, like, yeah, interviewing's amazing because you get to like get to know people right yeah. away, and 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 it, the interview goes as deep as you want to take it. You know, like you can mm-hmm. get people's testimonies and encourage other, you know, Christians who watch this. And yeah, For that's sure. awesome, bro. You should definitely like, yeah, lean into that. And, you know, start a YouTube. Ch- I don't know what that looks like, but yeah, we dude, we love to see y- young, young believers just living it out man like that's so cool to see like that you're taking the initiative to do that using using social media as a platform to to glorify him and it's that's rare that's super rare most most kids your age are probably worried about you know finding a girl thing or something you know? <laughs> so like the fact that you're like you have a mission you have a mindset to to glorify Christ through, 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 through doing things like this, taking the initiative, you know, reaching out to us. That's huge, man. I'm, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's cool to see. Yeah. That's like literally what it's all about. Like, yeah. You, and you found it. So keep doing it, man. Hope to see you all guys right, in person sometime soon. <laughs> That'll be fun. Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right, have a good day. Take care, bro. Yeah. I want my father for who he is. I run this race at my own pace. I'm not chasing your silhouette. Yeah, swinging at ghosts and goblins. Leave them with.